Which takes us to the top of the ladder, Port Adelaide and Brisbane. They are uh, suitably ensconced up the top with uh, a good form to back it up. But I'm not sure Ken Hinckley and Chris Fagan have been overly pleased with how much attention they've been getting. It's a great performance by the team. I mean, the boys, they deserve it. They've been there all year. I mean, we've sat on top of the ladder since round one. It's almost like we've sat fifth, but we've sat on top. I rate wins against teams that are in the eight and that are challenging way above teams that are not in the eight at this point of the year. So uh, um, I feel like our form's been solid. I, I don't know what we need to do to convince you otherwise. <laughs> Well, uh, Chris has got a point. They've had wins against Port and Collingwood, the Eagles, the Bulldogs and Kilda. Uh, they've lost to Richmond and Geelong. But if you had to make the case for Port Adelaide, Rui, uh, would it be easier to do than making the case for Brisbane? Uh, yeah, I think it would. I think it would. I think probably the reason that Port Adelaide haven't got the love that maybe they deserve over the past month is because that, that Geelong game still looms large, I think, in a lot of people's mind because of the build-up to it. Ironically, the week before, they absolutely smashed Richmond <laughs> over, at, uh, over at Adelaide Oval. But it's almost like the string of wins they've had since then mm. against average opponents, it, it, that almost hasn't been enough to wash away the smell of, mm. of that Geelong game, which, which yeah. isn't really logical because when you look at their profile, they... They play a, a really good game. It's, it's, a, it's a contest game. It's a fourth-half game. Their, their best players are in really good form. So there's a lot going right for them. They've done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. They've mm. jumped to the top of the ladder and mm. haven't moved. I'm just trying to rationalise oh, no, 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 the no, reason. This is a debate. So yeah. they, haven't, they don't leave their home. They sleep in their own beds. They haven't at the hub. They're going to get their first final at Adelaide Oval. They win that, hopefully. Well, that's no given. But if they do, they get a home prelim. I mean, we should be singing from the rooftops here. These profile numbers are all... They're through the right roof. There's the nothing game. in their, their profile. There's nothing in there that says they shouldn't be in this up to their eyes. Absolutely. And the only thing that points is when they have a bad day in the contest, the three losses have been beaten in contested mm, possession. Yeah. They're only three times. So, yeah, they're clearly a contest team. Um, numbers, yeah. look at that. You, you can't dispute those numbers. And I, you make a really good point, uh, Gaz, about the top two about, that we're speaking about, Port Adelaide and Brisbane. They're staying at home in their own beds. So, so that is an absolute... Uh, that's a big advantage. The longer this hub life wears on, it, the more and more the players are getting sick of each other. It's, a, it's the... Yeah. Per, I mean, Kenny, if, if he wants the credit, we're, we're giving it to you. And you should win the grand final. There's your pressure, right? There your there. numbers. So it, it, your numbers stack up, your form's been great, you're on top all day, you're playing at home, you're in your own bed, everyone else is ready. You should win the grand final. If you're Ken, aren't you happy that you're sneaking under the radar? Mm. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's just a fed in his playing group. He wants to but give them a little... They're, they're, still, they're, going, they're on top yeah. of the ladder. You that's don't need to defend that's them. That's what coaches do. Or, I mean, or, so or are you happy to go under the radar? Or do you think, you know, a, a bit of expectation to fuel the belief is what this group needs? I'm still fascinated by... This point, I'm fascinated by coaches trying to convince the football media yeah. that they're bona fides. Mm. Well, the only thing that's going to convince us all is what happens on the field. So it's just, I just find it interesting how even coaches, and they're both terrific men, they still get caught up in it. They still get caught up in the pressure of control of controls. Well, that's what, all we did, what we did see them control on the weekend was we saw an evolution, I think, in their game. So first quarter, and this was a criticism in that Geelong game, was Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. It was Charlie or bust. Yep. And it was a bit the same in the first quarter. We, we, we did the game. Eight inside 50 targets in the first quarter. It was so predictable. Yeah. Second quarter, they come out, lower the eyes. They, they brought the other options into the game. So everybody seems to be sold on Port Adelaide. You've got them winning the flag right now, or they should, sitting at the top of the ladder. No, what no, about... I'm just making a very good <laughs> Yeah, I understand the point.